Jesus is God's living word, his supernatural seed planted in our hearts. Stay tuned for an inspiring message from Kenneth Copeland, followed by a word from the Lord to encourage those who feel like giving up. Next on The Believer's Voice of Victory. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter. And let's read from the first verse. Now, I mean it now. You ought to be believing in me tonight. Amen. You start you start getting spiritually lazy on me, I'm going to wake you up. <laughs> Amen. 1 Peter verse, or chapter 1. Verse 23, very familiar scripture, but read it carefully, make note as we read, being born again, not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible. Now, what is the seed? By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Let's look at it again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. I want to talk to you tonight on this subject. It's all in the seed. Now this is not something you don't know, but it is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go tonight. It's all in the seed. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. If you didn't bring your Bible to light, well, look on with somebody there next to you because you need to put your eyes on it. Ephesians chapter 2, and let's begin reading with the fourth verse. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened or has made us alive together with Christ, with the anointed one. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in the anointed Yeshua, that in the ages to come, He, Jesus, might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now look at this 10th verse. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, at that time you were without the anointed one, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants 
of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were afar off are made nigh by the blood of the anointed one. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition uh, between us. Now, from here, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. This is my favorite place to start in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. And don't get upset. I'm not going to try to preach the whole thing. Well, I'm not going to say that. I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I got until next year. I, I, may, I, may, I may just go for it. You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, let's, let's go down to the 26th verse. Now, in the, the English Bible, and of course, well, I'm, I'm reading from the authorized version, it leaves the reader to think, and God said, let us make man in our image. It, it leaves the idea that God is talking about creating a man. And that's, that, that isn't true at all. It, 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 is, it carries the same thing. Go, go right back there at the very beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. That also has been translated, in the beginning, the blessed one created the heaven and the earth. Darkness upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. Now here again, it sounds like God is talking about light. But that's because of the way it was translated into English. Because it, went, it had already gone through a translation or two before it got down to us, you understand? And actually, I, uh, years ago, right in the, the first, um, j just the beginning of this ministry, the second or third year we were in this ministry, we, we were having a meeting in a, in a small town here in Texas, and, and we had a place to have our evening meetings, and back there in those days, our meetings went at least three weeks long, sometimes longer than that. And uh, we had a place for our evening meetings, but we were just having a, a terrible time finding a, a place for our morning services. And we, and we had la later on in the week that the, we could have the morning services in the building we had, but we couldn't have the first few days, I think it's something like the first week or so, whatever it was. And much to my thrill, the local rabbi opened the synagogue for us to have our morning services. And I was, oh, and he said, make yourself at home in my study, I said, do you, I, I thought, do you really think he really knows what he's telling me? <laughs> I mean, man, I'm, I'm going to go through every drawer he's got in there because <laughs> I'm on the hunt, you know, <laughs> everything I can find. And, and he blessed me and he helped me. And, and that was the, that, that first, the first day in his study is when I found out that God did not say, let there be light. I found out he said, light be, light was. I said, yeah, I can handle that. Ah, yeah, hey. Oh yeah. But can you, can you see the difference in the attitude of 
let it be as if something was holding it back. No, he just commanded. Light be. Light was. And that wasn't sunshine. No, that was, that didn't happen for several days later. What kind of light are we talking about? The glory. We're talking about light energy. 186,000 miles a second kind of light. <laughs> yes. But now see, that's, that's first mention. Now you follow that and it will really begin to open your, open your eyes, open your heart, your mind. Now you come down to that 26th verse. And God said, this is not the creator talking about a man. This is God creating the man. His lifeless body. He formed him, formed his body out of the dust of the earth, out of the dirt with his hands. But it had no life in it. And he's holding him. And you know what's amazing? They're the same size. <laughs> He's not holding, not, not some little, little bitty guy. No, no. You know how we can tell that? It's right there if you know where to look. <laughs> I'll show you a minute. God said, man, be in our image, in our likeness, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, over all the earth, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. Hallelujah. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Now, what was that? We'll, we'll, see, well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Those were seeds. Huh? You remember that Jesus said, the sower sows the word. Amen. Now, I, I, want, I, want you to, I want you to hang on to that. Look, look in the second chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now look, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now breath, now this, this is a reason we, in, in, in English speaking people particularly, we, we have a hard time with this because breath and spirit are the same word. And it looks like that God just took him and blew in his nose. No, no, of course not. You know better than that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Stand up in front of me. Now, 
Yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's in the likeness of God. He's the same size. You understand? Now what's happening here, extend around side of it. What's happening here if I'm gonna hold him like this? Man be. Where is it, where is it striking him? Right in the nose. Come on. You should have got more excited over that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is painting a picture to us and for us for what, was, what God was doing here. Because now, let's go to the first chapter of the book of John. John saw this. God revealed it to him. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. Read, read that aloud with me, please. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things were made by Him. All right. If all things were made by him, then all things were made by the Word. That's right. Now, here's another thing I found out uh, while I was really digging around in, <laughs> in the rabbi's study, and, and of course, with his help. <laughs> the root in Hebrew for a thing is word. Now that's, that's an eye opener. And, and that's exactly, that's, that's exactly what we just read. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Now, all of those words, beginning words, light be, he released a form and manifestation of his glory that never had been seen before. He released matter. No angel had ever seen matter before, material things. And that's the reason when he created the man, the angel said, read it in the book of Psalms. The angel said, what is that? What is a man? What is that? That you visit him? They'd never seen God visit anything. They'd never seen a man. They didn't know what a man was. They had never seen material matter. Everything they had come in contact with before was spirit. And now, that's the way we're going to be when we get to heaven. That's the way they were when they saw, when, when they saw that garden. Material thing. We get to heaven, we're going to see spiritual material. You know, it, it's going to be, it, and it's going to be something. You, we're going to. There's no telling how long we're going to spend this. Wow! Wow! Oh wow! Did you see that? Oh wow! <laughs> Oh, wow. 
<laughs> I'm that way now <laughs> about the things of the Lord. He can only, <sighs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Now, what did that just say? In him was life. But now, wait a minute. In the word is life. His word is life to those that find it and what? Health to all their flesh. Can you, hey, hey, the word is the seed. The health is in the seed. I said the health is in the seed. The life is in the seed. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I know, saith the Lord, more than you know about what you've been through. There were times when it was so difficult for you to keep from just throwing your hands up, just give up and quit. I know that, Lord, saith the Lord. I was there. And sometimes it didn't seem like I was there, but I was there. I was there. I was the one that didn't let you quit. I was the one down in there deep, deeper than you even knew you had. I was the one in there at the moment that you just said, I've had this. I don't need this. I'm done with this. Glory to God. I, and, but, just, but then, well, yeah, but well, no, I can't quit. I, what's the matter with me? I can't quit. He said, I was the one that was scratching on you down there in the inside because I knew then and I know now that you're bigger than you think you are. You're more powerful than you know you are because you see, you thought you failed. You thought this is, I, I, I've, just, I've just done it again. I've just flopped again. Here I am, Lord. No. You didn't quit. You're still here. You don't know how victorious you really are because you couldn't see all that was arrayed against you like I could. You have no idea the forces that Satan put together trying to get you out of his way. You see, you're very important to the devil. He hates you. You are dangerous to his affairs and to all that he has planned. And he has no defense for what you have on the inside of you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So rejoice, and again I say rejoice, aha, uh -huh. for the best is yet to come, and heaven has it written down that you won the battle, you stood the test, and now the good stuff happens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. The Word of God is more than just a collection of promises. It is a living force. It is a seed that once planted by faith in a human heart will produce more blessings than you can imagine. 
it has the supernatural power within it to produce the harvest of a lifetime. Get excited about it and start planting today. There's a name that is above every name, a name that contains power to overcome every enemy and pull down every stronghold. It's the name of Jesus. The Power of the Name of Jesus package is a 10 CD series and companion study guide by Kenneth Copeland that gives you the foundation in the Word of God to know how the name of Jesus represents the very power of God the Father. Put that power to work in your life and it'll lift you high above the circumstances you face each day. As you listen to Jesus, the name above every name, you'll learn how to use the name of Jesus and expect signs, wonders, and miracles to manifest in your life. And you will understand that your position in Christ places you in the heavenly realm to reign with Him, living a life full of victory. You have authority in this world. It's time to take your place. Don't go another day without knowing and drawing upon the name of Jesus. When you understand your authority and right to use His name, you will overcome. Kenneth and Gloria have a gift for you. Request your copy of the Power of the Name of Jesus package. Receive your rights and your authority to use His name. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Discover the power to overcome the enemy and pull down strongholds. The power in the name of Jesus. Request your gift today. For this and more from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The love of God's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We have the love equipment in us, hallelujah. It is in there and faith activates it. Hallelujah. April 7th through 9th, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland welcome you to the 2016 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. April 22nd through 23rd, get connected at the 2016 Living Victory Chicago Faith Encounter at the Sheraton Hotel and Towers in Chicago, Illinois. May 12th through the 14th, the Copelands invite you to the 2016 Canada Victory Campaign at TELUS Convention Center in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. July 4th through 9th, join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests for the 2016 Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information on these and other events, go to the KCM website. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing.